May I begin? Thank you for having me at this hearing. I am not going to read my full uh, okay. statement today, but uh, I will provide a short summary. I am uh, very proud to be here to represent uh, Radio Free Asia, uh, which was created to provide local and accurate news to the people living in closed countries. Their access to reliable journalism is restricted and censored. For millions of listeners uh, in Asia, RFA often serves as a lifeline to the truth. As a broadcaster with RFA Uyghur service, the only independent Uyghur language news service outside China, exposing the truth can come at service cost, ser severe cost, not just for me and my colleagues, but especially for our families in China, even our sources are not spared. Because of our work as journalists, China views RFA as a hostile foreign news network. This perhaps has never been truer than now. When RFA has, has been at the forefront of covering an unimaginable humanitarian crisis in China, Uyghur region, their Chinese authorities have detaining more than one million Uyghurs as well as other ethnic Muslims putting them in prison-like facilities while implementing a vast high-tech surveillance state to the monitor and the intimidate the remaining population. Throughout this development, my colleagues and I at RFA Uyghur Service have worked tirelessly to report on events as they occurred in our former homeland. This includes breaking the news of mass detention of Uyghurs at the very beginning of China notorious re-education camps in the spring of 2017. First interviewing uh, the camp security guards and officials who described the harsh treatment and the conditions. RFA first uncovered the construction of crematories near the facilities and the RFA first reported on the overflow of kindergartens and the orphanages of Uyghur children whose parents were detained. China attempt to suppress the story start from the very beginning. We cannot ever visit our homeland again. China would never allow us to get journalism visas. Instead, we are forced to reach out <coughs> reach our sources using other means, including phone calls. But even that is becoming very difficult because authorities monitor calls and they use all AI technology and voice recognition software to cut off us from the reaching sources. Even, so, uh, even sources outside China face threats to their families and the loved ones still in the country. This makes it harder to get leads and the confirm developments. As is well known, Chinese authorities have even resorted to threatening my colleagues and me at Radio Free Asia, even though we are based on United States and the most of us are US citizens. They do this by targeting our China-based relatives. I am among six journals with RFA Uyghur service whose family members have been jailed, detained, or disappeared because of our work. The sad thing is we cannot be sure about our family's well-being or their fate. Attempt as connecting them carry serious risks. I know and my colleagues know that our work is important after we began reporting on this human rights crisis in the Uyghur homeland, journalists in the Western media have investigated and confirmed many details that were first reported by RFA. Knowing that so many of our peers turn to RFA as trusted source is very encouraging. But 
The cruel irony doesn't escape my colleagues and me. Though we have journalists understanding, journalistic understanding about so many events happening in the Uyghur region, we are often the last to know if our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, and our children in prison or not, if they are sentencing or punishment, if they are in need of health or medical care, if they are still alive. That is the fear we live with every day, every hour. But there's a, one greater fear that urges on, urges us on, that if we stop doing our duty as journalists, if we were, if we were silent, the world would simply forget. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Singe. Thank you very much.